Hi there, I'm Lynn Branley of LWS Lynn Wardrobe Sews, and this is the second sew along video for my Nomi Pattern 2069 View B. Here are the pieces and the amounts that you need to cut out for View B of Nomi 2069. Number 17, the front of the pants, cut two. Number 18, pocket facing, cut two of lining. Number 19, side front and pocket, cut two. Number 20, right fly, cut one and one of interfacing. Number 21, left fly facing, cut one of fabric and one of interfacing. Your back piece to the pant, number 22, cut two. Number 23, are your back pockets, cut two. Number 24, are your carriers, cut one. Number 25, right front waistband, cut two of fabric and one of interfacing. Number 26, left front waistband, cut two of fabric and one of interfacing. Number 27, back waistband, cut on the fold, cut two and cut one of interfacing. Also, please be sure to make sure you're cutting all your notches on all these pieces, as well as making sure to transfer any large or small dots located on each piece. The first step we're going to do is you're going to take the back pieces number 22 and you're going to sew the darts that are up here towards the waistband and you're going to do that for both pieces. So now that you've sewn out both back darts, you will press the dart toward the side seam. And then you're going to take your back pockets. And the way we're going to do those is you are going to press the um, right side edge down to the wrong side a quarter inch like that. Then with that pressed, you're going to fold this back until you reach the two dots that are on the side here. Oops. So it's pressed like that. You're going to sew 5 eighths from the dot to the edge of that quarter press and the same on the other side. And then you're going to cut that little bit out just past the stitching. And then we're going to turn it and I'm going to show you how I do that. So once you've done your folding and pressing and folding back on the right side and stitching, you'll clip out these two sides. Then you'll turn it right side out so it looks like this. And one little trick that I do that's not in the instructions is I take the pattern piece and I make a paper template that takes off all of the upper hem as well as the 5 8 seam 
so that it's the finished pocket size. And then I use this template at the iron to press the exact seam allowances and on the bottom you put the temp template in place and then press and you just get a much cleaner uh, pocket outline and I just take a piece of cardstock like I said match it to the pattern piece cut down the seam allowances that they have you fold in and and use this to press when you're done with that you're going to top stitch here and all the way around the perimeter so across here and all the way around the perimeter of the pressed pocket and you will match this finished pocket to the two dots that are on either side of the back dart. So here's my back piece. These are my two dots. So with the finished press pocket, you will pin that in place on those dots and top stitch all the way around. I'm going to use the contrasting top stitching like I did for my top. So I'll show you how that's done. So you can see this is the finished pressed pocket. And I have my template that I've pressed into it. And you just pull that out. And now you have a perfectly symmetrical pocket that you'll place down, lining up to your dots. You'll pin that in place and top stitch first and then all the way around the perimeter of the pocket. When it comes to top stitching, I really like to use edge feet, this is edge foot or the blind hem foot. Being able to keep this center bar along the edge of a seam or the edge of a pocket and moving the needle left or right to be able to stitch on the edge makes all the difference in the world for a really straight top stitch. So I'm going to put the back pockets on using the edge stitch. That center bar gets lined up right on the edge of the pocket. And then I move my needle to the left at least three. Three would have you probably at about a sixteenth. Four would have you at about an eighth in. But that bar hugging the perimeter of the outline of the pocket, it's what's going to give you a really straight top stitch. So once you've edge stitched and then top stitched, it looks like this. So now you're going to take piece 17, your front piece, and piece 18, which is your pocketing, pocket lining, and you're going to line that up between the dots right there and there. And this is uh, right sides to right sides. 
and you're going to stitch 5 eighths between the dots. I do this for both sides. So now you'll trim down your seam allowance. You'll fold your pocketing away from yourself, your front, and you're going to stay stitch or edge stitch your pocketing to that seam allowance so that when you press it, everything will be tucked to the back side. Now using your edge foot again, you will stitch two rows of top stitching along your front pocket opening. So now that you've done the top stitching to the front at the pocket opening, you are going to take the side front and pocket piece, number 19, and you're going to put it with right sides out to the wrong side of your front piece, matching at your two dots right there. You will flip it over and you are going to sew 5 eighths that piece that you just laid down to the pocket lining, keeping the rest of this free. You're going to stitch 5 eighths inch from the top here all the way around to the side right here. And then I usually go and overlock that, um, these two pieces to have them finished. So do that on both sides. And when you're done, you're gonna baste right across here at the top and right across here at the side so that the basing, the front of the pocket, which becomes the remainder of the front of the pants, is also now your pocket bag. So now you're going to take these two front pieces and at the large dots, you'll put them together and you will sew from the large dots to the notch. Now you're gonna take your zipper. You will have pressed under the right side and you are gonna place your zipper. Go ahead and open it. And you are gonna baste, lining up at the top, you are gonna baste that folded right edge from the top all the way to the small dot, which should be right at the zipper stop. So using your zipper foot, you will base that folded edge right up against, right, right at your teeth. And you will base all the way to the small dot.
Now you're going to take piece 20, which is the right fly. You're going to fold right sides together. And on the bottom curved edge, you're going to sew from the fold to the two little dots that you have marked on either side. You'll trim off the edge. You'll turn this right side out and press it. So now you're gonna take piece 20 and I usually overlock the front fly. Um, the pattern suggests that you base these two together. I always clean them up. Then you can baste it to uh, that edge that was folded and the, the little bit of zipper tape or you can pin it in place and you basically go back over that basting that you did stopping at the zipper stop again with your zipper foot so right just right over the basting line so that the front fly is secure then you're going to take piece 21 and you are going to match the notches and you're going to match the dot there and you are going to sew 5 eighths down to the dot. So now the fly facing you've attached from the top to the small dot and you're going to turn the seam allowance towards the facing and you're going to edge stitch or stay stitch the seam allowance to the facing so that then you can fold it back to the wrong side of the front piece which is on the left side. So now you'll press this and you'll baste through these layers to keep the seam allowance, the front and the facing all together as one. Now, because I'm doing the contrasting top stitching thread for all the details on my pants as well as the top, instead of doing that basting that the instructions tell you to do, I am going to baste the facing to the front at that top edge. Then I'm going to end up attaching the other side of the zipper to the facing here on the back and I'll show you how we line that up and then when I do the J stitch top stitching I'll do two rows and bar tack um, with the contrast top stitching so you're going to want to move that other side out of the way 
and I'm going to top stitch about an eighth and an, of an inch away from that edge. So after I did the top stitching, then you're going to move the other side of the zipper out of the way. And now we're going to sew the opposite side of the zipper tape onto the fly facing, making sure to keep clear of the front. So you'll pin that in place and sew that all the way down. You may have to sew to right before the zipper pull and then zip it up a ways so that it doesn't get wonky around the zipper pull, but you'll end again at the uh, zipper stop. So you just take that to your machine and do that. So again, you make sure that you have everything out of the way, the fronts, the other fly um, out of the way, the front's out of the way. You're sewing the other side of the zipper tape to the fly facing only. And I usually do two rows. I do right along the edge of the tape, and then I come in and I get pretty close to the teeth um, so that that's really secure. So I'm going to do that now. zip it up just a little ways so that I can get close to the teeth without the zipper pull being in the way. And when you use jean zippers, the pull is a locking mechanism. So when it's facing down, it locks so that your zipper doesn't come down. When you're using denim, you definitely want to use a jean zipper for that reason. So I'm sewing close to the teeth and now I'm going to do the zipper pull down past the zipper foot so that I can continue in a straight line. So I like to chalk my J stitch and I use a template um, to make sure, you know, that it's even and nice. You're going to be stitching through the front piece, through the fly facing, making sure you unzip and keep this side out of the way. The, the J stitching is only through the front piece and the fly facing. I'm going to use my contrast thread to do that top stitching. And if you use a template, you want to make sure that that J goes just below the zipper stop. You don't want to hit the zipper stop. Um, you'll break a needle. And then if you want to 
The next step would be having you tack the uh, fly to the facing. Um, the pattern suggests you hand tack that, so you can do that. And typically, I like to put a bar tack right here and here. And before I do that J-stitch, I'll usually pin the fly out of the way so that it doesn't get caught in there. Um, you want this out of the way so you can open your zipper completely. And then when you're done doing that top stitching J-stitch, then you will tack the fly to the facing. So now with everything out of the way, pinned away on this side, I am sewing the J-stitch. So the front and the facing together to form a J. So at the very bottom of the J top stitching, I do from the center front seam for probably like a quarter of an inch, uh, a bar tack by doing a satin stitch. So take your zigzag stitch uh, and make it really narrow, like a two and then make that stitch length um, like 0.2, so it's a satin stitch, and you'll, you'll sew for like little, a little more than a quarter of an inch for the bar tack. And I just make sure I'm at the very bottom of the top stitching so that I'm nowhere near the zipper stop. So now with the front done, I go ahead and I overlock the outside um, selvages on both the fronts and the backs. And I also do the back, center back, um, and the inseams of the back and the front. So laying the back on top of the fronts, you are going to attach the inseams uh, to both both backs. So both backs to both front inseams matching the notches 5 8 all the way down both inseams. So you've sewn your front and back at the inseam together and then I press them open. And then you're going to go from the large dot that you had right here, just below the zipper, and you're going to stitch all the way through those inseams and all the way up the center back of the back of the crotch seam. So now you're going to pin your outer seams together, right sides together, the fronts to the backs, 
and you'll pin it and you will sew five eighths on both sides all the way down and then press the seam open. And this is the stage in which I will stop and try the pants on to determine if I need to take them in at all through center back or at all, maybe a little on the sides. And then you're gonna put your waistband pieces together, the interfaced pieces, matching the notches. You'll sew five eighths to have those. So that's the back, and this is the front pieces that attach up here. And then I go ahead and also do the non-interfaced pieces, sewing five eighths on the sides so that those are ready. And you're gonna make your belt carriers. You'll have the, the piece of fabric um, that you cut and you will fold a quarter inch and a quarter inch and press, and then you fold it in half and press like I have done here. And then I do two rows of stitching, top stitching with the contrast, top stitching thread all the way down. And then you will cut these into five equal um, sections that are three and a half inches long. Once you've tried the pants on and before you put the belt carriers and the waistband on, I do a stay stitch around the top um, of the waist. So at the top of the pants, in the seam allowance, just stay stitch all the way around. Now you're going to pin your belt carriers in place, um, hanging downward so that they are in the waistband seam. So the two front waist, uh, belt carriers are going to be on this side just to the right of the pocket top stitching and to the left here of the pocket top stitching on the back you're going to do one 
in the center back. And then the other two you're going to line up with just the edge of the pocket going straight up. And then you can base those in place. So now you have your belt carriers all placed and sandwiched between the waistband and the garment itself. You're going to make sure that you've extended that waistband 5 8 past the end of the placket um, and the zipper facing. And then matching notches, you pin it in place, and then you sew 5 8 all the way around. Once you've done that, you're going to trim down the seam allowance and you're going to press that seam allowance up towards the waistband. So now that you have sewn the waistband on and you've trimmed the seam allowance and pressed it up, you're going to take your waistband facing, you're going to press up a half inch on the bottom of it. You will place this on top of the waistband. You will pin it all the way around and you will sew up the side of the waistband and all the way around, um, you will trim it down, turn it right side out, and press it. And once you're to that point, you will press up your belt carriers and wherever your waistband uh, seam allowance uh, meeting the facing ends, you will fold the end of your belt carrier and place it straight up. And then I usually go back and bar tack at the top of the belt carriers. If you want it to be kind of like jeans, you could also bar tack here. Before I put my belt carriers up, I am going to, with the facing pinned in place, enclosing the seam allowance and having this pressed edge be the edge I will top stitch all the way around down below, up the sides, and all the way around in the contrast stitching. And then I will place my belt carriers and do the bar tack also in the contrast top stitching.
So now that you have your waistband done and top stitched, you put your belt carriers facing up, turn it under. I always leave a little bit of ease down here on the bottom to accommodate a belt. And you're just gonna bar tack across the tops all the way around. So now that all your belt loops are done, the last thing you need to do uh, on the waistband is put a buttonhole for your closure. And even though the pattern calls for a 5 8 button, I like to up the size on waistbands just a little. So I'm going to do 3 fourths. Um, just extra coverage, extra strength there because it's at the waistband. And another tip is that, um, especially with lighter fabrics, denim, you don't have to do this, but I always put a piece of tear away, like embroidery stabilizer tear away behind where the buttonhole is going. So, um, especially down the front of like shirts and that kind of thing to just help stabilize those satin st stitches within the buttonhole. Um, and then you just tear it away. So your final step is your hem. Uh, I recommend that you try your pants on and try them on with the shoes you plan to wear. Um, I have pants that I make at a longer length if I know I'm gonna wear platforms with them. Um, and then once you decide what your finished uh, pant leg length is gonna be, you're gonna mark that leaving an inch and a quarter for your hem you fold under a quarter and press, and then up an inch and press, and then you're gonna top stitch with your contrasting top stitching thread all the way around, and then you are done. <laughs>